We're about to start the Artemis generation, and for me that's incredibly exciting. If you look back at the Apollo generation and what it created in terms of technology development and spin-offs, whether it's insulation for, for fire, whether it's the technologies on our mobile phones we rely on every day, pushing the boundaries of human knowledge that comes from exploration will always have benefits back here on Earth. To know that very shortly uh, NASA is sending rockets to return to the moon in deep space, uh, I think is, is an important moment uh, in human history. It's going back to create a permanent, sustainable presence. And we're proud of the Australian Space Agency to be partnering with NASA on its Moon to Mars program. Australia has been a long-term partner in space, particularly deep space exploration, if you look what we've done with the Canberra Deep Space Communication Complex and the other dishes uh, around the nation. And so Australia was proud to be one of the founding signatory for the Artemis Accord. They're really looking at putting a framework in place for a practical way to access the moon and live permanently uh, on the moon. As part of that, we are proud to sign an MOU with NASA and launch our Moon to Mars initiative, which will see Australia develop a semi-autonomous rover uh, that will go to the surface of the moon as soon as 2026. The Australian Space Agency leading our first mission to the moon, it shows a, a very significant shift in our view of ourselves as a player in the global space community. Not only are we now developing satellites that will look down at Earth and help us address some of our greatest challenges such as climate change and disaster resiliency, we can also look to the stars and know that we're working on a small vehicle as a meaningful first step in our ability to leverage science to explore our solar system. Activities in space and activities as we look to explore the moon and beyond are absolutely reliant upon robotics and autonomous systems. Fortunately here in Australia, we've led the world in autonomously operating, uh, whether it's mine sites or oil platforms or train depots or even ports. NASA was one of the international partners that identified really early we had unique expertise. There was really a coming together of minds that hey, a rover mission from Australia could be a meaningful first step to demonstrate that capability. In October 2021, we signed a Space Act Agreement with NASA, and this Space Act Agreement ultimately is the thing that has enabled our Trailblazer rover mission. What we'll see happen is a commercial vehicle, which is under NASA's CLIPS program, will take uh, the Aussie rover to the surface of the moon. This rover's mission uh, is very much about uh, that permanent presence uh, for humanity on our closest in interplanetary body. So the rover will collect lunar soil called regolith and take it to a NASA plant which will look to extract oxygen. And if we can extract oxygen on the surface of the moon, obviously as humans it's very helpful for breathing, but it also can be used as a propellant so we don't need to carry all this liquid oxygen uh, from Earth to the moon in order for the moon to be a leaping off place into the rest of the solar system. It's going to impact sort of our understanding of how the Earth was formed and how the solar system was formed. So there's a lot of intertwined planetary science uh, in this mission, uh, an important science that's going to be needed to understand uh, how we develop that permanent presence on the moon. An important thing to consider when you develop a rover for the moon or a satellite that's orbiting the Earth, that work's done here on the planet. You know, this is creating high-tech jobs, it's creating value in the economy. They're all creating services and spin-off technologies that improve life uh, here on Earth. This mission will serve as a catalyst uh, for Australia's contribution to even more meaningful uh, space exploration activities uh, in the future. Not only have we launched our first national space program and that we're developing a rover to the moon, we're working on a plan that looks at the vision for space in Australia in the 2040s. We call that the National Plan for Space. And if you look at the, the prospect of other nations that have developed space technologies, what comes from having constellations of your own satellites, the ability to launch rockets from your own territory, the ability to develop rovers for interplanetary systems. Really, the sort of, there's no limit to what we can imagine and what we can be motivated to achieve in space in the decades to come.